Hello and welcome. How good it is to have you join us for our virtual service. It's Thanksgiving weekend and we wanted you to see our beautiful front garden lovingly kept for us by Kathy Clark. The door is open because uh, on Sunday mornings we do have our in-person service and we're getting more and more people feeling comfortable to come back and be part of our indoor service. But you are equally important joining us in our virtual online community. We're so glad to worship with you each week. For Thanksgiving, we're celebrating the bounty of the earth and uh, all of the joy that comes to our life through God's benevolence. Uh, you will see both Kathleen and me in the service today, but we're wishing Kathleen a happy vacation because she's off for two weeks the next two Sundays and will be enjoying some well-deserved downtime. If you are wondering what other things might be happening around Bracebridge United Church, just check out our website and see what's going on. But for now, please take the time to settle, to center, to ground yourself as we move into our Thanksgiving worship.
It's Thanksgiving Sunday, and we begin our worship with this poem by Mary Oliver called Messenger. My work is loving the world. Here the sunflowers, there the hummingbird, equal seekers of sweetness. Let me keep my mind on what matters, which is my work, which is mostly standing still and learning to be astonished. The Phoebe, the Delphinium, the sheep in the pasture, and the pasture, which is mostly rejoicing, since all ingredients are here, which is gratitude. And in a spirit of gratitude, we light our candles. So our worship begins reminding with the reminder that in the beginning, God created light. And God saw that it was good. Let us worship together by singing our opening hymn, Called by Earth and Sky found in more voices at number 135. Thank you. 
morning on Thanksgiving Sunday, the words of that hymn are so appropriate, called by earth and sky to acknowledge the goodness of God's earth around us. I invite you to do that as we join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we have gathered here on this day to worship you. It is a day that we Canadians remember as Thanksgiving Day, an extra, extra special day to reflect and be grateful for all we have been given, to praise you for the abundance of the earth, to praise you for taking care of us in all that we do. This year we may have a chance to gather in our families, God, in ways we haven't done in a while. And so we ask you to protect all of us as we do that, but also to remind us how good it is to have family around us, whether by birth or by choice, to know that we are part of your family and to give thanks for your presence always with us here in this time of worship, but in our daily lives each and every day. Help us to look around us and see the beauty of your world in the reds, the oranges, the yellows of our world right now, in the blue sky, in the cool breezes that are reminding us of winter, but also celebrating that it's not here yet. Thank you for all of these things. With gratitude, we worship you today. Amen. Let's take some time with our young people. This little pumpkin sits on my bookcase in my office. And I brought it downstairs with me today to show you. It's not very fancy. In fact, it's from the dollar store. But when I saw it, I picked it up because it reminded me of several things. First of all, it reminds me of fall because it is a pumpkin. And it's one of my favorite seasons. It reminds me of Halloween, which is also one of my favorite holidays because you get to dress up and do crazy things for Halloween. But it also has a saying on it. I don't know if you can quite read it from there, but it says, thankful. And it reminds me of Thanksgiving and of the joys of the season. You know, yesterday, I was listening to a weather report talking about the winter and how it was going to be terrible. And I was already getting annoyed about all of the awful winter weather we were going to have. And then I thought, but it's still fall today. And at this time of year, I generally begin to look towards the winter. And I think, oh, snow shoveling and boots and coats. I was just enjoying sandals and not having to wear socks and now I have to find them and put them on. And I get a little grumpy anticipating winter. But right now, it's fall. And on a day like today, I can wear my sandals and I can appreciate that it's a beautiful fall day. Sometimes it's really easy to miss the good things in front of us, to see that only what we're missing, to see only that which is wrong. And there's been a lot of opportunity in the last year or so to see what's wrong and what we're missing. But sometimes we have to open our eyes and see what's good right in front of us. Beautiful fall colors, the opportunity even in smaller numbers to gather with family, turkey and stuffing. These are all wonderful things that we can celebrate right now. So we have to keep looking for the good. Be grateful when we find it. Even if it's small, little things, these are the things that keep us going and help us center in here and the now. So when I look at my pumpkin on my bookshelf, I'm reminded to be grateful for what we have. Not to be mentally putting on my winter coat and boots, but to be celebrating right now for all that I've been given by God. I hope you can do the same. Have a great week. We'll talk to you again soon. Our scripture today is from the book of Matthew, from chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. And this passage comes from the section of Matthew known as the Sermon on the Mount. 
And over several chapters, it contains many key foundational teachings that Jesus offers. Reading from verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. beautiful anthem. Ah, Thanksgiving, the perfect holiday. It's a holiday that comes without a lot of baggage. No obligatory gift to buy, no cards to send or letters to write, and there are no large bunnies dispensing chocolate eggs everywhere you go. It's just Thanksgiving, a quiet, appropriate holiday. 
Most of our Thanksgiving hymns focus on the beauty and creation and the bounty of creation. We are fortunate to live in one of the most beautiful areas of Ontario. With the sparkling Lake Muskoka nearby and the burbling Muskoka River running right through our town, we are constantly reminded of the startling abundance of fresh water we are privileged to have in Canada. Drive north on number four at this time of year and your breath is taken away by the beauty of the colored maple trees. Go to Memorial Park on a Saturday morning and tour the farmer's market agog with all the produce and foodstuffs available. Take a hike along the Wilson's Falls or Strawberry Bay Trail and sit on boulders under sprawling trees and listen to the sound of the forest. This is one corner of a beautiful country from the majestic Rockies to the sweeping prairies to the rugged coastland and all the spots in between. This being one country in a world of beauty filled with awe and awe-inspiring views. There are times in our life when we are acutely aware that life is a gift. Times when we are overwhelmed unexpectedly by the beauty of the world that we did not create. Times when we are embarrassed by someone who loves us and we have done nothing to deserve their love. Miraculous moments when we receive a gift we can never repay and there is nothing we can do except say thank you. There are moments in our life when we are conscious of our dependency. We eat food we did not grow and use machines we did not invent. We cannot demand the company of friends or merit the loving support of families, but we depend on them. And there is nothing we can do except humbly say thank you. Matthew quotes Jesus as saying, do not be anxious, do not worry. Take a lesson from the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. In saying this, he reminds his listeners that the richness of life is found in resting in the love of God, being in the presence of the Holy One, pausing to consider the transcendent source in the universe, the spirit who can satisfy the deepest cravings of the human heart. That I get, and for that I give thanks. But I saw a sermon title for a Thanksgiving sermon, and I said to myself, I wish I'd thought of that one. It was giving thanks in a grumpy world. I wished I had thought of it because I think the question for today might be, how does one give thanks when events in the greater world and in the smaller world of our own life do not seem to lead to gratitude. Thanksgiving Day is a day when we are called to offer thanks to God for the whole of our lives. That's not always an easy thing to do. Oh, we have great things going on, don't we? But we each have our share of misery, regrets, and disappointments. Thanksgiving forces the question about how we live with the good, but also the bad and the ugly. 3,000 years ago, the Jews formulated blessings, barakoth, for every circumstance of their lives. Come goodness or strife, they had a blessing. If it was good news, they would say, blessed be he who is good and does good. If it were bad news, then blessed be the judge of truth. As far as they were concerned, humankind has a duty to pronounce a blessing on the bad in life as well as on the good, because all life comes from God. 
When we gather here as a congregation in the sanctuary or virtually through our internet for worship, what we hold up, what we celebrate, is the whole of Jesus' life. The defeats along with the victories, the gentle birth alongside the crucifixion, the sleepless night in Gethsemane alongside the empty tomb on Easter morning. Because in retrospect, in faith, we believe that it is all a single tapestry and the removal of a single thread diminishes the whole creation. Our challenge this Thanksgiving time is to see our own lives in the same way, to learn how to give thanks at this altar, not only for the mixed blessings of Christ's life, but also for our own. To say thank you for the whole mess, the things we welcome, as well as the things we risk our souls to escape. Hmm. I have received many times over this past month, and so has our church administrator and other members of the ministry team, words of thanks from members of one group that have continued to meet in our church building. Not at first, but eventually, it was wisely and rightly determined that one essential group that needed to keep meeting were the 12-step programs. We have been able to keep our doors open to the AA groups and the NA group that meets here. In doing so, the open space of our building has saved lives, literally saved lives. There are many who have been able to keep going because they can lean on the support of their AA group. They come through the doors and into our auditorium and know that there they will find acceptance, strength, caring, and fortitude. In her book, An Altar in the World, Barbara Brown Taylor says that when she began to read the Bible and think about the Bible, she realized that in the Bible, the world is God's home, God's beloved creation, God's very good creation. In the Bible, she says, people encounter God not so much in church, but under shady oak trees, on riverbanks, on mountains, and in long stretches of barren wilderness. God shows up in whirlwinds, starry skies, and burning bushes. When people want to know about God, the Son of God tells them to pay attention to the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, to women kneading bread and workers lining up for their pay. I think Jesus might have added AA meetings. Two. Taylor goes on to say, whoever wrote this stuff believed that people could learn as much about the ways of God from paying attention to the world as they could from paying attention to scripture. Knowing that, acknowledging the world, the earth, nature, other people, as God's good creation and gratitude for what is, for the miracle of life itself, for the amazing productivity of the earth, for the beauty of the whole of community, that is at the very heart of our religion. The psalmist wrote, praise is due to you, O God. We say, Thanks be to God, because we believe that God is somewhere to be found in everything that happens to us. Thanks be to God, we say, because we believe that the cords of God's love are never severed, however dark or convoluted our path through life may sometimes be. God is God, and our lives are our lives, and we can love them or leave them, give thanks for them, or whittle them away with regret. Our choice this morning is to embrace all that we have ever been and done and haul it up upon the altar 
and there recognize our lives as sacraments. So get a gratitude attitude and do some happy thanks living. Whether we spend our weekend time to join friends and family or to spend time alone, God goes with us. And there is no corner of our lives that God does not inhabit. Let us be on the lookout for God and be ready with our chorus. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing that beautiful hymn that celebrates all that we have. It's found in the hymn books at number 227, For the Fruit of All Creation. Thanks be to God. plate and it's always nice to see envelopes in it on Sunday morning but I would like to draw your attention today to the display that I have right beside me here it was created by one of our members and it reminds us of the gifts of the earth for Thanksgiving Sunday but it's one of the things that we give thanks for here at Bracebridge United Church not just the envelopes that end up in our offering plate but all of the gifts of time and talent that come from members of our congregation. Whether it be wonderful displays like the one beside me, whether it be taking time to do any of the little things around the church that need doing, whether it's taking time to go and visit people and connect with them. These are all amazing gifts that we're so grateful for that make our church family what it is and make us so connected so we give thanks on this Thanksgiving Sunday for all of those joys. The other joys that we would like to lift up are the bounty of the land around us, the opportunity to gather as COVID numbers are going down in small groups and to, for the first time in quite some time, have some normalcy around celebrating Thanksgiving. 
We can't help and let Thanksgiving go by without giving thanks for turkey and stuffing and cranberries and pies and all of the wonderful ways that we express our love for each other in food and the joys of opportunities to celebrate anniversaries and birthdays, the joys of the world around us dressed for fall in all of its beautiful colors. The concerns we lift up, well, we have many. We are concerned for the people that are not able to gather with their loved ones this Thanksgiving, that are missing loved ones around the table. We have concern for those that have been diagnosed with new illnesses or are facing tough decisions as to what to do with ongoing illness and situations in their lives. We pray for those who <clears throat> are still being tormented, challenged by the reality of COVID, by continuing restrictions, continuing isolation and loneliness, continuing fears. We especially pray for parents. It's not easy having kids in school right now and dealing with uh, quarantines and questions of the health of our kids. And so we pray for those families with kids in school and the teachers that are teaching them. There are so many things to lift up in prayer, and I know that you have things that you would like to add to. So I invite you to take a moment and think about your joys, your concerns, the things that you are grateful for as we move into a time, time of meditative music. Let us pray. Holy One, source of goodness and joy, you, spirit of life, are one of astonishing generosity. Your creation bursts forth with abundance and we are left gap mouth at all that surrounds us. The colors around us fill our vision. The sounds fill the air. The scent ranges from pine forest to fresh fall air, the taste of a crisp apple or baking made with love. You, maker of heaven and earth, fill our sense each day with almost more than we can comprehend. And so we begin this prayer in gratitude. Our gratitude does not match your generosity, but we are grateful for the produce of the earth, for stories told, for lives lived, our faith compels us to take this time to sing your praise and hear your word. And out of this place of faith, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those who taught us the stories of Jesus. Thank you for those who mentored us in our faith walk. And for those who called us back when we strayed. Thank you for those who helped us heal when we were broken. We have joys that we share in community, joys that show how we are blessed in this life we live, the joy of family gathering at this time of year, the joy of new babies welcomed into the family circle, the joy of treatment offered, uh, the joy of healing begun, the joy of ritual and ceremony, the joy of songs to sing and stories to tell. And it is from a place of confidence, confident that we are held in your love, confident in your grace, confident in your mercy, that we hold others in prayer before you. We raise up to you our concerns. We pray for those newly grieving, 
adjusting to an emptiness that brings deep heartache and sorrow. We pray for those who are ill and long for health and wholeness. We pray for those who struggle to keep faith and feel only a sense of alienation for your love. While we also pray for those who speak your word with confidence and share your love with abandon, responding always to the nudge and call of your Holy Spirit. In the days ahead, O oh God, we pray that you will make us ready and open and eager and responsive so that we may share your love in every way. We gather these and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as to our mother who loves us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The closing hymn for our Thanksgiving service is found at number 236. Now thank we all our God. this way with. So let us be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and go with God's blessing.